got a big mouth, and ain't that many people here. Okay. Just a couple of things. I, I just want to uh, welcome everyone who's come tonight. Uh, most of you are on prayer text. Uh, you received my text. Uh, Tommy is under the weather. I'll explain all of that shortly. Uh, we are filming it tonight, uh, but it will be uploaded tomorrow. Um, and so, but it's just the precursor of what's going to happen next week. Next Wednesday night, we won't be in here. We'll be over in the other side of the church, which is the Fellowship Hall um, Worship Center. And so you can park around back, or you can still park around front, front, but these doors will not be open. We will not open the sanctuary. Uh, we will keep it locked just because we, we don't know what's going on in here when we're in yonder. So uh, just come around, and, uh, and you can park out front, or walk the sidewalk, or just park back here. There should be enough parking uh, back there. But that's one week from tonight. Uh, tonight will be our last night in here because you, you hear the air conditioner running. Right now, it's really easy to cool this place, but uh, you know, in a couple of more weeks, it's going to really get tough to cool. So we want to conserve all of the electricity we can. Uh, we'll have it set up back there as we did. I'm really excited about getting back uh, and getting back in there. It's been a, a, over a year since we've been there, and so um, so you know, make sure you spread the word. Uh, and we will not be live streaming from back there. Right now, we don't have the equipment to have it both places, and that equipment is not designed to move from place to place. If you don't like to be unplugged, you will eventually tear it up, and we don't want, we don't want to uh, have to buy it again. So uh, let, let's just say we're going to do it that way. We're going to carry a camera in there, and we will film it, and then we'll upload it if anyone's interested. Or maybe you're sick and not able to come, and you want to stay up with our study. Uh, that will be done there. And so just, you should uh, hear that. Also, for our church council members, uh, if, if the, there is mail in your mailbox. If we believe it or not, we're a week and a day away from our last church council meeting this church year. Uh, and we will gain new members, and, and we will continue to see the old ones again. So, uh, so make sure you go by and get your, uh, as I told Connie, she can start working studying up for me, okay? So, um, so please do that. And also, I think that's just about it, other than the nursery list. If you haven't checked the nursery list uh, and you're just dying to get on that list, please go back there and put your name down. Uh, and if you're dying to get your name off the list, go back there and put an X over your name. If not, you're going to be scared. That's all I'm going to say. And I will make that out and have that in your mailbox this Sunday so that you know what's coming until now, to September, well, the end of August. And if you noticed on my announcements, we're calling it on call list. Basically, you're not going to go upstairs and sit away. You're going to be on call. And so when the, the moment comes that we have children that needs to go to the nursery, we'll call on you and, and we know what Sunday is what, and you'll go up and take care of the children. Everybody in there clears the veil, right? All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a little singing. Let's you come lead us as we sing with you on the Everlasting.
sounding real pretty. That sounds good. Thank you for that. And um, just a couple of prayer requests. I've got some pretty big updates. Number one, I'm going to update you. You probably saw the wife outside. Um, she got some great news today. Basically, he told her, and I really wish I could talk to the doctor, but he said, uh, do what you feel like doing. And so she'd been walking around the house without the food, and she'd been, uh, you know, but, but it, you know, she's, she's not going to push it because the doctor says, I'm not worried about it. He said, it, it, it won't let you. He said, it will stop you in your tracks. And she's learned. Um, she's got to move on today uh, because she can't stand it up without it long. And so, uh, but the, the funniest part is she came home with another boot. This one she has to sleep in for the next three weeks. And she just, boy, that just made her day. I'm telling you, because that thing is so big. But it's not as big as the old, the one she's wearing now. But anyway, uh, she's doing real well, got great healing, everything looks good, um, but um, and they, he feels like, and then he told Darlene, he said, you know, in six, it's going to take at least six to eight months for you to get back to normal. She said, do what? But anyway, I won't say what else she said. But anyway, um, Terry Burris, uh, we, I have spoke about him uh, he had a real tough week this week. Uh, he was transported by ambulance to Concord. Uh, and um, he's got a blockage in his heart. Uh, and they've known it for many, many years. Uh, and it, it's, it, Terry says he calls it the, in the area of the Widowmaker uh, of the heart. It's in the bend of the artery, and they can't fix it. Um, and there's really nothing to bypass. So they can't do a bypass. And so they've been treating it with medication. Well, uh, it sort of caught up with him. Uh, his blood pressure had gone up. And I, I think Terry is still in mourning uh, from losing his wife early. And uh, he's just having a real tough time dealing with it. And so uh, it made his blood pressure. Well, now they put him on three different types of blood pressure medicine. And bless his heart, he said, I've slept all day long. And so uh, just continue to pray for him. And, uh, he's got a stress test that they're going to do about the 10th of May. Um, and that's a long time out. But anyway, um, he's, he's doing okay. I'll give him a hard time. And um, we were picking it up. Uh, so uh, anyway, that was the update on Terry Burris. Um, Betty Gibson added Roy Hunter uh, on our cancer section. Pat Bakers. Uh, had a successful surgery. Uh, I even got a picture. And I told the daughter, I said, you know, uh, she looked a whole lot better than what I thought she looked. I thought somebody would took a ball back to her, you know, because they cut both her, her eyelids uh, because she, they were covering up her pupils. Um, now she does, looks like she's seen a ghost. But anyway, uh, I can't wait to see her tomorrow. I'm going to give her a hard time there. But, um, uh, you know, to make a long story short, it was successful, and it will relax some after that. Uh, Kate Riley is still hanging in there. Uh, she was talking to me uh, Tuesday and was doing real well. But um, her bed sores, they finally got her off of her back, and she's now laying on her side, and she seems to be more at ease with that. The family was able to sell her car, and that was something we've been praying about. Now we just got to find Andrea a place to live. If you know of anyone that has a very inexpensive uh, apartment that allows um, comfort animals, please let us know, okay? Um, Mark Bailey's dad, Steve. If you haven't heard, Steve Bailey had a pretty major stroke. At, at, at the beginning, they thought, uh, and I shared a little bit Sunday morning, but they thought it wasn't quite as severe, but the more they look into it, uh, the more he is uh, showing signs of severity in the stroke. Uh, he has uh, been still in the ICU. He was in the ICU. He's now been moved out into a, um, the neuroscience floor, which is like a regular room in that area. Uh, and he is looking forward to 
going to the rehab center, which is just across the road, where a lot of some of you have have spent some time there. Uh, it is to me, it's one of the best. Uh, besides uh, Pineville and the, the rehab in Pineville, this is the the next best in my book. But this is what Mark writes. He said, um, update on Steve, moved out of ICU to neuroscience floor, stroke was larger than doctor realized. Uh, doing good with therapy, walk, walking to nurse's station uh, the last two days, and did not pass the swallowing test, so he had to install a feeding tube through his nose for some nutrition. Treating him for pneumonia, Thanks for everyone for their continued prayers. So he's not out of the woods yet. And the feeding tube is fairly normal uh, because you know you, you don't need to go, you, you're not going to get better if you're not getting nutrition. And so just ask that you continue to remember Steve Bailey and that. Uh, Teresa Bunny, she's loving life. Yeah, she has a cast, but she has a granddaughter standing with her all week long. And she says she's really taking good care of her. And so we just thank the Lord for that. Uh, and um, just continue to remember all of these. Uh, the, um, uh, the fellow from Rockingham, the Kenneth Brown that I've been telling you about, uh, has really had a tough time. Uh, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And, and friends, I'm going to be honest with you, the family is lost, or at least he is. And that's why Kay's been asking us to pray is because he has nothing to do with God or, and, and just does, want to, does not want to have anything to do with him. And, and I think God's trying to get his attention. So pray for Kenneth Brown in that area. Uh, and uh, I haven't heard from Jeff. He must be really busy today. Or this this whole week, uh, I texted him and he just wrote back, um, still busy, and that's all he said. And so uh, he's, I don't know what the update is on Dole, but just asking that you pray for Dole, uh, and and whatever the Lord's will is in that. Also continue to remember Sherry Edwards uh, and just lifting her up to the Lord as she continues this. Um, immunotherapy that she's going through for her cancer, her brain cancer. Also, um, Wendy asked that we remember Derek tonight. Um, Derek uh, has some sinus stuff going on, uh, and then his father also just went through hip replacement yesterday. So, a lot of stuff going on in their family, and I know they would appreciate your prayers. But it's good to have Wendy and her son here tonight. Also, we want to just give God the praise. And the praise is Marcus Morton went back to work yesterday. I, I, he went by my house and blowed the horn and he made my afternoon. And I texted him, I said, Are you kidding me? You're back at work? It wasn't it was real strong blow. I mean, it was just like, and about all I could get out of him. But, uh, but I saw, you know, I used to pick at it and say, that southeastern truck still comes by my house, but you ain't in it. Uh, but uh, he got, they dropped down in a, a company below us, and they come by every day about the same time, somewhere between 4 and 6 in the afternoon. And so the reason him and Renee can't come is because he doesn't get back to Charlotte until almost 6 or 7 at night. And then he's got to drive back home. And so... Um, so just uh, give God the praise for that. Uh, Renee is much better too, so we're going to be removing them off of our list. Uh, we're also going to be removing Darlene off the list uh, and so that we might have room for others. Tony, you've got a date on your surgery yet? No. they still not talking to you. Well, they, they say it's going in the right way at least now. All right. So another six months? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Uh, well, let's just pray that Tony hurry up and gets that surgery. Bless his heart. Um, I know of others that's like Tony that's waiting to have that surgery done. Your turn. Jane.
Benson from Georgia. We prayed for her with the COVID. She was in the, uh, oh, she's in the ICU for months. And, uh, but they, it probably will not allow her ever to go back to work again. Uh, and then, Miss Barbie, what was her first name? Taylor. Taylor. Taylor Barbie. Uh, it's close to her due date, but not close enough. Uh, she's been having some stomach issues, and it needs you to pray that that baby will stay in that warm oven until it's time to come out. Okay? Okay. Yes? sing in the main lobby area that I would have to do just a little room settings. And I said, that's cool. I can do concerts today. I said, I'm going to charge you too much more. But anyway, uh, you know, Tracy laughs when I say things like that. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, 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 you know, they have two or three different ones now, areas of gathering. And, um, and I don't know how to work out. I'm really curious. They may call me about before I get my scheduled date to go and then they say to stay home. And that's sort of what I'm expecting, but um, that's okay. We'll be patient. They waited, like Bill said, for a year. And uh, bless their hearts, they, they deserve just to see a smile on the face. Like I said,
said, anybody wants to go with me, it's on the calendar. Now, you can meet me there, you can, you can meet me here. Those days, you can see the time, you can see the place. So come go with me. fighting the fight to losing fellowship and friends but knowing that you're in control but Father help us to stand stand on the truth and what it says literally what you say and believe it Father help us to be like Joseph Help us to be used in a mighty way. And Father, we just praise you for this time of prayer. And we do lift up our nation that Father is searching for peace. And Father, they're finding hell itself. Help us not to waste another minute to share as we go. That we have the message Lord, we love you. We thank you for each person here tonight. And we just lift each one up in the 
unspoken request that Father that was not mentioned. God, <coughs> I know you know the hearts, you know the outcome. Now, Father, we just lift up and say, Father, you be glorified to this sickness. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Take out your Bibles and turn with me to probably one of the most familiar chapters in the Old Testament. I'm not going to ask you that how many of you know this story by heart, but most of you do. Most of you know this story by heart because it's the story of Joseph. But before we get into it, I, I want to just do a little recap, if you will. I want to do a little recap. That's Genesis chapter 37, and you'll remember this. We're calling this section Joseph's story because we're going to, from now until chapter 50, from 37 to 50, it mostly centers around Joseph. And even though the scripture said this is the story of Jacob or the genealogy of Jacob, but it centers the main character is Joseph, and we find that Joseph at the very end speaking to his brothers, and he said, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. I love that. I, I wish I had the faith to say that about when somebody does me wrong or somebody tears down a ministry or someone even splits a church. I wish I could say that I'm in the place of God. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And I'll be honest with you, I'm learning that more. The older I get, the more I try to learn that. You remember we looked at Joseph's first of of his story and we find that he was 17 years old and I will ask you where were you when you were 17? What was your dreams? What was your background or upbringing? What was your mistakes already? The question is are you in the place of God? For all of us that are 60 and above, isn't it amazing how we got where we are today? It's truly amazing that I even lived out of my things. But when we study Joseph, we study a man of faith, a man of integrity, a man of honor, a man of patience. We learn all of those attributes about Joseph. But the one thing that I want to concentrate on tonight, and, and I don't want to bore you with a story you already know. You already know the story of Joseph and how his brothers threw him in a pit and how his brothers sold him to the Midianites and, and how this and that. You all know that story very well. If not, go back and read it. It's a really easy read. just like Jesus. And that's what I want to concentrate on tonight. But first, when we looked at the story at the beginning, we see hatred, we see poor parenting, we see outrageous dreams, and we see envy. And I asked you as we closed last week, the two weeks tonight ago, that basically the envy is probably is what caused every bit of this Hatred and poor parenting and even the dreams. Now, now we find out these dreams were from God. But it caused a whole lot of problems. Well, to put it blunt, bluntly, what we're going to watch, and, and, and Joseph does, a, a, he drives a roller coaster. If you remember ever studying him, I mean, he's up here, and then the very next week, he's hit the 
rock bottom. You know, he went from the palace to the prison. And then he came out of prison back to the palace. I mean, Joseph went through, you know, he was the favorite son of Jacob. And then all of a sudden, he became the hated son of his brothers. Joseph went through a whole lot, but, you know, when you look at it, you've got to call it sin. You, you, can't, you can't call it competition. You can't call it what the world does today, and that is boys being boys. No, this is pure tea, unadulterated sin, and God takes that sin in His sovereignty and trumps whatever sin has the control. So when you study the life of Joseph, watch how God works at his plan. Now, I don't know about you, and we're going to get into it, and I don't want to steal some of my thunder from the coming studies, but, but you know, you and I would file a complaint with God after six months being in prison. Can I tell you that it took over two years for Joseph to get out of prison for something he did not commit. Why would God allow such bad things to happen to such a good boy? We're going to learn a whole lot about that. But my goal is tonight that you will look at this story with a brand new set of eyes, not learning the story of Joseph, which you already know, and you've already taught the children all of your life. I want you to look at it and see if you can see Christ in the story. I had never really looked at it that closely until a couple of my commentaries started pointing me that way. And the more I read, the more excited I got. I couldn't wait to get here tonight. You see, what we're going to find is in Joseph's story, there was a mission, there was obedience, there was rejection, and there was deceit. Now, let me expand on that. Let's look at this mission that Joseph on. Look at verse 12. In chapter 37 of the book of Genesis, it says, Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Remember Israel? You know who that is? That's Jacob now with a changed name, right? So now the, the, the writer, which is Moses, I believe, is calling him Israel. And so it, that, that's what God gave him the new name. So Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So Joseph said to Israel, Here I am. You see, Israel said, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Do you see Christ in this mission? Well, I do. Because Joseph was sent. And I don't understand why in the world other than it was the work of God and the Holy Spirit. But why, can anyone tell me why Israel would send Joseph, his favorite child, one that he would never want to lose the company of, why would he send Joseph that far away, which some people believe it was a one to two day journey on foot and through the dangerous areas of, of the world, why would the Israel send his son? We really will never know, but he did. And the most amazing part about it, Joseph knew how dangerous it was. He knew what he was facing, and he also knew the hatred of his brothers. He had dealt with it all his life. For 17, 18 years, he had dealt with the, the snug comments. 
the cruel treatments. Why would God, why would Israel send Joseph the same reason God sent Jesus? You see, the most amazing thing is Joseph was surrendered to his daddy in question. What, what, what you want to say next? Here I am, Lord, it's in you. Do you realize that God, in all of His glory, said, Son, I'm going to send you to the earth. I want you to see how my children are doing. I want to see if they're well. I want you to go. And He said, I know it's going to be it's going to be tough. And I can hear Jesus say right now, Father, I'm ready. Here am I. You start seeing Jesus to, to come into life in the, in the life of Joseph. And you see him going through the exact same thing that Jesus came through. Do you realize that Joseph left his home with his dad? Never had he been apart from his dad in 17 or 18 years. And now he's leaving and he's going on a journey two days possibly on foot in a very dangerous area and he is surrendered to his dad and that he will do whatever he needs him to do but he will be separated. And I wonder, was that Jesus' hardest decision in my life? Because he's been in glory for eternity. Never been separated from the Father. And God said, Son, I want you to go. And Jesus said, Here, sign me up. Even though Jesus knew what was coming. Don't you think Joseph knew what was coming? Don't you believe that Joseph knew exactly what? He didn't think they would kill him. But he knew that he would have to hear their, their comments, that, 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 that he would have to endure their abuse. But he was willing to go on his mission. Listen to the obedience in verse 15 through 17. It says, now a certain man found him, that's Joseph, and there he was, wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, what are you, what are you seeking? And he said, I'm seeking my brothers, please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph, or so Joseph went after his brothers, and found them in Dothan. The obedience. Isn't it, it amazing? They were supposed to be in Shechem. He had to go another 20, maybe half a day's journey just to find them down in Dothan. Now, Dothan is a wonderful place to feed animals, they said. But he had no idea where they were. But yet he went. And he went where they were. He could have turned right around and went back to Dad and said, Dad, they're not where they're supposed to be. Boys are acting. You know, they're doing what they want to do. But he did. He went where they were. He went to where those brothers were because he was on a mission from his dad. And his dad said, I want word of how things are going. I want word that everything is okay with my sons. Same as what Jesus did. Jesus came to go here. You know, it would have been a whole lot easier if Jesus would have said, why don't you send David? He flies pretty quick. We can get back to the word. Why don't you send any of the angels for him? But he was obedient to go to where the brothers were. And 
Joey Brown. Sin by his father to do his will. I don't know, but it, I started getting, by the time I got to this part, I started getting real excited because it was plain as the notes on my face. Jesus is all over this story. But it gets better. It gets better because as you study and as you look at this, then you hear of the rejection. And we've all talked about this and we, we teach our children, oh, don't be mean to your brother or to your sister or, or you know, or bully anyone. I mean, you use this story with all kinds of I guess you could say all kinds of genres because it's, it, it's useful in every setting, but I want you to think about the rejection of Jesus. But let's read about Joseph. Look at verse 18. And we're going to read all the way through verse 30. It says, Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against to kill him. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we, will, we shall say, some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of, these, of his dreams. But Reuben said, or Reuben heard of him, he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that we might deliver him out of their hand, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers and had stripped Joseph of his tunic, that uh, the tunic of many colors that was on him. And they, they, then they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted up their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with the camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh uh, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah, remember this, so Judah, said to his brothers, What profit is there that we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. For he is our brother in our flesh, and his brother listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph and lifted him up out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes, and he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? Rejection. Joseph had traveled all of that way on the mission of his dad. He had done all of this in obedience to what his father wanted. And yet when he got to his brothers, they received him not. They rejected his own brother. And friends, this is not just somebody that's mad at one another. These boys are ready to kill him. That's only one thing that you can call that, and that is purity sin. That you can take a life to meet your agenda. But in our world today, that is the going trend. Watching the news this afternoon, person after person was shot and killed. 
them walking up in their yard. Friends, it, it's sin. What's happening in the world today? It, it's not a deprived individual. It's not a, 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 a society fix that we need. No, we got a sin problem that we can look at another human being and take their life away. That, that's the problem. It ain't the guns. It ain't the bringing social upbringing. No, it's sin. And until we deal with the sin, until we deal with it, it's going to remain and do nothing to be worse. You see Jesus yet? Jesus came on a mission from his Father, being obedient to his call. And what happened when Jesus got here? He was rejected. And Jesus said, and the writers of the gospel said, he came to his own and they received him not. Joseph is showing us Christ because they refused to believe the dreams. They refused to dream to going to bow a knee to Joseph. Well, I'd rather die than let them bow a knee to him. He's nothing but a spoiled brat. He's nothing but uh, my father's favorite. I'm not bowing to, bow to him when God was trying to tell them through Joseph's dreams what was coming and that one day they would bow to Joseph. And that Joseph would save their lives. Jesus did the same thing for us even when we refused to believe. He still died. This is where it gets real good. Joseph had no way of knowing what was happening other than his world had just ended. He's now a prisoner. And do you want me to tell you how much Joseph's brothers thought of him? A common slave was worth 30 pieces of silver. They were the He wasn't even that. A little over half of his story. And do you want to see the other sin that's stuck in that story that every time I read it, it makes my sin skin boil? Joseph is in the end crying. Begging for his life. And these aggravating brothers sit down and have a comfortable meeting with him. And it doesn't bother him. That's where we are today. And the sad part about it, Judah said, Hey, why kill him? Let's make some money off of him. I, I mean, I, I told you to, to, to keep your eyes on that spot. Because we're going to come back to it. At verse 26 says, So Judah said to his brother, What prophet is there to kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. Did you hear what he said? And plus, we're innocent. We'll be innocent. See, that's where the people are today in America. They, they believe that if, if they go around in a different way, it's not called sin anymore. It, it's not a problem, and God's not going to hold them accountable. Let me tell you, God held them accountable, and I love it the way he did it and the way Joseph did it in the end. There's one more. And that's the deceit. And I never saw this until I was reading one of my commentaries and and he jumped off the page after, but I'm going to let you read it with me, and then I'll point it out what I'm talking about. Verse 31. So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent a tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We 
we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's children or not? And he recognized it and said, It's my son's children, the wild beast that devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn in pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, but sat put sackcloth sat on his waist and mourned for his son for many days. And come to find out that many days when it didn't turn out to be He mourned with Joseph until he saw Joseph in Egypt, which was truly the only way. Verse 35 says, And all his sons and all his daughters of those to come to him, but he refused to comfort him. And he said, For I shall go down into, my, into the grave to my son in the morning. Thus his father wept. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt an officer of Pharaoh and a captain of God. Do you see the scene? Look at verse 32. Why is the word there secret? Most people believe that they were so cowardly they would not tell their father they sent someone do it for them. And then they came along behind him, reading the end. So they took Joseph's tunic and they dipped it in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors. And they didn't know who they were, but it was their father. So we don't really know who it was. But I wonder, were they so full of deceit? That they didn't even have the guts to face their dad with this deceitful story and say, look what happened to Joseph. Is this yours? No, let me tell you, uh, the most amazing thing is if we want everybody else to do our bidding or to do our ugly work, and I am up to here in this nation of people backpedaling and, and trying not to hurt people's feelings no, no, friends. And it's not for somebody else to tell them. It's for you. And I'm going to ask you, do you have a strong enough backbone to say it is safe? And the sad part about it is this deceit went on, as I said, 20 years, and many, many believed it. And all of the brothers kept it secret. But there's some more characters in this story. I want to show you. I've got two minutes left, so we're going to go through it real quick. You do the study on your own. But there's more characters. Do you realize that Judah lines up perfectly with Judas? What did he say? Why shouldn't we profit? And, and we can almost in our mind's heart say that was probably one of Judas's arguments is I can sell him for 30 pieces of silver. I can sell him and, and I can make profit. We can make profit. And we see the story come alive. Reuben. Go back and read Reuben when you get home. He sounds just like Pontius Pilate. Because old Pontius says, I, I find no fault in him. I, I wash my hands. Blood's on you. No, Pontius Pilate had the power to say no. But he wanted to be friends with everyone. Just like Reuben. Reuben was the oldest son. Reuben could have said, instead of saying throw him in the pit, he would have said, no, he's going to be set free. And we're going to take him home to dad. But Reuben tried to 
friends, they remind me so much of the Sanhedrin court. They were, excuse my language, hell bent to kill that dream. The Midianites were nothing but the Roman soldiers. what they do. It's just what we do. We just buy and sell people. Buy and sell murder. Spices. But what do we see in judgment? The same thing we see in Jesus. The suffering servant. We pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for one of the clearest pictures of Jesus. Some 1,500 years before he was ever born. Thank you for showing us this through your precious word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming.